Welcome to the Lifestyle Medicine Update. I'm Dr. James Machino. You know, over the years, I've watched many patients and acquaintances make significant dietary and lifestyle changes that have significantly reduced their total cholesterol, their LDL cholesterol. Um, remember, the LDL cholesterol is the bad cholesterol that deposits cholesterol into the artery wall, leading to blockage. This, of course, greatly increases the risk of heart attack, stroke, the need for bypass surgery, and other cardiovascular problems. Eating less saturated fats, trans fats, deep fried foods, pan fried foods, breaded foods, and high cholesterol containing foods, and bringing your blood sugar down into a safe range, these are the things that really help to lower total cholesterol and LDL cholesterol to the greatest degree. Endurance exercise and reducing body fat can also help. In some cases, due to genetic factors, drug therapy is required to get LDL cholesterol into the safest possible range, which is a blood cholesterol level below 1.5 millimoles per liter or 58 milligrams per deciliter. Consuming more soluble dietary fiber and eating 30 grams of walnuts per day have also been shown to significantly reduce LDL cholesterol levels, so that's great news. But having a high HDL level, hey, an HDL cholesterol is also very helpful as the HDL cholesterol is the good cholesterol that acts like a vacuum cleaner that removes some of the cholesterol that's already been deposited into the artery wall. So HDL helps to reverse clog arteries to some degree. The ideal HDL blood cholesterol to shoot for is above 1.6 millimoles per liter or 60 milligrams per deciliter. Unfortunately, the same factors that lower LDL cholesterol don't always raise the HDL. As I said, many people lower their LDL cholesterol through these great dietary and lifestyle practices, which is great, but their HDL remains low, which is not so great. And this is often in cases where there's sort of a genetic uh, limitation on HDL rising. So how can you raise your HDL? Well, in 2018, the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition published a review of all the relevant studies testing avocado consumption as a means to raise HDL. The studies provided some good news for people who are trying to increase their HDL levels. In the seven studies conducted to date that were deemed to be relevant, avocado consumption on a regular basis when they had people take avocado significantly increased HDL cholesterol levels by 0.07 millimoles per liter or 2.84 milligrams per deciliter. It's not a huge elevation, but it does help. Avocado consumption did not lower total cholesterol, didn't lower the LDL cholesterol, didn't lower blood sugar levels, but simply raising HDL levels is a very impressive finding. Now there's other established ways to raise your HDL levels besides eating avocados more regularly. These would include regular endurance exercise, aerobic exercise really helps a lot of people. Reducing your waist circumference if you're overweight, that really makes a huge difference for many people. And for, for smokers, if they quit smoking, HDL tends to go up by quite a significant margin. Using extra virgin olive oil has been shown to improve the efficiency of HDL to remove cholesterol from the artery wall. Even if it doesn't raise the HDL level itself, it makes the HDL cholesterol particle more effective at removing cholesterol from the wall of the artery. So, so using extra virgin olive oil is something I would really recommend. Eating 30 grams a day, about a quarter of a cup of cashews per day, has been shown to slightly increase HDL levels. And uh, the, they applied this in type 2 diabetics. It also lowered their, their systolic blood pressure. So it, it raised their HDL and it lowered their systolic blood pressure in type 2 diabetics who often have low HDL and high blood pressure. So this is a pretty good strategy, we think, for raising HDL. Coconut oil has been shown to raise HDL cholesterol levels, but it raises the bad cholesterol, the LDL cholesterol, to an even greater degree, which results overall in an increased risk for heart disease. So I don't recommend using coconut oil to raise your HDL levels or for any other reason. Now there's some con con uh, contradictory evidence regarding the ability of fatty fish and omega-3 fats to raise HDL levels. Some studies show that, that fatty fish and omega-3 fats raise HDL to some degree. Other studies have shown that they don't do anything. So. Um, I'm not sure if HDL is going to be helpful for that reason, but eating fatty fish and having omega-3 fats in your diet have other properties that do improve cardiovascular health, so they, they can be and really should be part of a heart-healthy and cardiovascular program in most cases. So raising HDL is not an easy task for some people due, to, due likely to genetic factors that you're born with. 
reducing your waist circumference, getting regular endurance exercise, quitting smoking if you're a smoker. These are the three big lifestyle factors that can raise HDL to the greatest degree. Consuming some avocados on a regular basis, cashews, using extra virgin olive oil, these things are also going to help. So I've, I've provided the references for this information in the text below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.